All right, I think we're starting this. I'm enjoying some music here. Heck yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me just, let me just turn this down for a second. Or off, I guess. <laughs> uh, hello, I am Peter. I'm going to do some watch work today. Uh, this is what I do for a career. Uh, I work on and fix watches. I got this guy on the internet just the other day. And uh, it said it needed some repairs. So I'm going to see what I can do. I've got some spare movements. And hopefully I can use some of those parts. Uh, they're from other watches where I've replaced the movements on those watches. Uh, but maybe part of it's still good. So we're going to kind of mix and match and see if we can keep as much of this as original as we can. It's a Luminox. If you can see through all the... All of the scratches on the crystal there. I do not have a new crystal for this today, but I will be getting the crystal replaced soon, hopefully. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and open this up and kind of show you what's in here. I have I have already opened it up. I have already looked at it. Uh, the whole thing with Luminox watches is that they have tritium tubes, uh, tracer. Uh, whatever all this other stuff says. MB Microtech Incorporated. It's supposed to be 20 atmospheres water resistant. All the pressure of 20 atmospheres. But you open it up and there's, you can already see, you can already see a number of things here. Um, and we're gonna try to address what we can with it. There we go. So this is a Ronda movement. It's a Swiss movement. Ronda, five jewels. There's one, two, three, four. And then I think the bottom side of this one here also has a jewel. So that'd be the fifth jewel. Um, which is nice in a quartz watch. You don't really see that too much. This movement itself is a Ronda. 715, as you can see right there. That's, uh, that's how they stamp their movements, is they just stamp the number into the plastic somewhere. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, this watch is plenty dirty. There's just dirt everywhere, and if we get real close up here, there's like hairs. Like a number of them. Like, how does that even get in a watch? <laughs> Look at all that stuff. I don't know how that all gets in there. So we're going to disassemble this. I'm going to take the dial off, the hands off. And the goal is um, I'm going to take some, I've got some rubbing alcohol here. And we're going to try to give it a little bath. And I've got a toothbrush. Uh, it's clean. It's actually brand new, literally just for this. Um, and I'm going to take this and try to scrub out as much as I can there. Um, hopefully the gear train still works. It uh, Here, I'll flip this over again. Actually, let me take it out of the case here for you. This has a screw down crown right here. I always see people trying to pull out crowns and they don't pull out because it's a screw down or it's really severely locked up. Uh, I also have to address the gap here. See, when you pull the crown here, do you see how everything's moving in there? You don't want that. You don't want that rattling around. Um, there's a screw missing here that holds down this battery tab and also that circuit. The battery tab here actually looks like it's intact. Doesn't look like it's corroded or anything, so that's cool. And we've got the insulator. Uh, but also very, very dirty in here. I don't know if this coil is going to work or not. Uh, it looks pretty funky. Pretty dang funky. 
And I'm going to go ahead and get this crown out. You actually have to click it out one click and then you can push uh, on the lever release spot there. No, I never, I never actually looked in here. Okay, so that is rubber there. Very dirty. <laughs> so Luminox, their big thing, and I started explaining it earlier, the Swiss Tracer, the Microtech stuff. Um, you can see these tubes on each of the hands here. And, whoops, that's in the case actually. And on every hour marker, you can kind of see these little tubes here and up at the top there. Uh, these tubes have tritium uh, material in them. I, th I think it's a, I almost want to say it's a gas, but it might be a solid. <laughs> All right. I'm not quite sure, but there's tritium in there. And um, usually glow in the dark stuff, you have to charge it up with light for it to, to glow. This stuff is just radioactive and it just glows permanently. That's the... T on the dial. If you ever see a dial with a T like this, it lets you know that it's tritium, so don't be eating it. Um, but because it has those tubes, as you can see, these hands are about three times the height of normal hands. So the posts that the hands sit on are all super, super, super tall. So that's why I hope this gear train still works. Uh, obviously, I do have spares of this height. Well, hopefully this height. I've never actually measured it because I haven't taken this watch apart yet. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and get these hands lined up. So I get everything pulled apart. You know, they make, uh, they make a fancy hand removing tool. And part of me is tempted to pick it up just so I can have it because I think it would be nice to have. But I also think that it's kind of maybe a bit overkill, but if it can help me be more precise in my work, I think it's well worth it. I'll push that dot again there. Sim comes right up. Get our hands lined up enough there. That also didn't want to freely click around, so the gear train might be locked up. We'll see. We will see. I need a this guy. Uh, you know what? Let me take off. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me take off that second hand first. Okay, most of the stuff on there isn't actually loose particles. <coughs> Excuse me. I should be muting when I'm Go up in there. Oh my gosh. This janky. This is a janky cheap version of this tool. Uh, but it works. So. There we go. These are all janky versions of the tools here. <laughs> But it definitely works. Here we go. Yeah, maybe I'll grab a brush or something later to really clean that dial off. There's a couple, you can kind of see little dots around, but 
Oh well. Um. Okay. Ah. My my apologies here. There we go. Now we can now we can groove. <laughs> Uh, so this dial is held on literally just by some friction posts. There's no screws or anything to undo. You can kind of see there's a little spot right here. There we go. Try to work it back and forth. Oh yeah, that's that's lovely. Ooh, it's crusty. <laughs> Why is it crusty? Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's rust. It's just some gunk on there or something. Set that aside for now too. Uh, let me measure. Four seven. So the stuff that I have, I think, is too tall. Um, but I think the gear train should be okay. Hopefully. Well, from there, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off the date stuff on the top here. You never know; there might be more gunk under here. Okay, just four screws there. Mm. Screwdriver's not, not uh, cooperating as nicely as I'd like. So normally at, at work, um, most watches that come in that are quartz, um, if uh, it doesn't work, we just replace the whole movement. Uh, partially because finding individual pieces, not always an option, uh, but also just the cost effectiveness of how much time and effort and skill do I have to put into retrofitting, you know, a piece. You can just swap it out. Uh, but some of the, you know, like some of the higher end Swiss stuff. You know, let me look through the thing. <laughs> Sometimes there I might just swap out pieces. Um, but yeah, usually it just, and some movements you can't work on at all. So those you always just replace. Okay. Oh, I think I see stuff. I think I see stuff in here. Or is that on that wheel? Yeah, do you see that wheel's got some discoloration there? And there's more fibers and all sorts of gunk and stuff. Um, I might try to clean some of this stuff. We'll see. Little spring with the date jumper. Okay, here's our battery insulator. 
Yeah, screw it. I I, uh, I don't really take quartz watches apart too, too much. Uh, but this one's a fairly common one. So I might as well just toss all these parts in like a, an ultrasonic. Just give them a go. These are all metal parts too, so that's nice. That's the uh, the date jumper right there. When you oh, that's off. <laughs> when you go to correct the date, that little slanted piece on the side there, that's what does it. I'm going to leave. No, let's take it off. No, oh, yes, why not? <laughs> That's what the minute hand sits on. The cannon pinion there. So it's similar to a uh, mechanical movement. And then, yep, just like I thought, the, the jewel that's on this side is the... Uh, I guess I don't know what you would call it in, in, in a quartz watch. But it's like our fourth wheel, basically. Oh, that's all I can take off on this side. Okay. So again, we're missing a screw here. I should have one in some of these parts that I've got. Two other screws we can take off here. Normally I would not be grabbing a screwdriver this far up and stuff, but I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way so you can kind of see what I'm doing there. Okay, a couple screws there. Oh boy, what's it gonna look like under here? Oh my gosh, it looks like a circuit board. Let's get our circuit board, just has one screw here. This also holds the coil too, the other end of the coil. This should come out now. Whoops. And I don't have a quartz tester at home here. I wish I did. I actually, I'm gonna be ordering one soon. Just a little cheap one. Just a little cheap one. Uh, just something that if I put a battery in this watch that I can see it pulsing for me. And then, yeah, I think this coil shot. I think this coil shot. Um, that shouldn't just be a loose wire right there. That should not just be a loose wire. We could maybe salvage that. Um, I don't think I've got that paste. There's a paste you can put over this. Um, I know I had a pen of the stuff, but I don't think it's, I think it dried out. Like you're only supposed to use it for like a very small window actually after you open it. And it's definitely past that window. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've got We can try it, it's electrical paint. Uh, we'll try that at the end here. If it works, cool, if not, I should have other coils that I can use. Uh, nope, that's... <laughs> yeah, that's hard as a rock, that is not... Uh, that's not gonna work. <laughs> that's just hard as a rock. Throw that out. Uh, yeah, so this coil shot. 
which is okay. Now look at how much... Look how much stuff there is in there. I might just have to replace this piece. So what this is, is um, in a mechanical watch, a wheel. So you start back at your spring. You wind up a spring, and the spring's attached to a wheel. And that wheel turns the pinion on the next wheel, or the next gear, whatever you want to call it. And then that pinion, which is like a smaller gear, makes the bigger wheel spin which moves to the next one and so on and so on. This coil kind of acts as our spring and it makes a pulse and there's a magnet on this wheel here. And then that magnet makes it go bloop, 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 bloop. Like it, you know, cause it sends it, it sends a controlled pulse. So that's how your quartz watch works. And then that moves all the way down the train. But it looks like this gear train is actually moving and working. That's a great sound. What is that? You can see when I let go of it, it goes back. So that must be a piece of metal or something. I just want to know where all these, where does this all come from? Um, oh, and then here's the rest of the, uh, this end here. So here's your battery tab and that touches on the bottom side here. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I don't know electronics that well. The little orange insulator, those pieces, that always goes flying. People usually miss those. When they're putting a watch back together, they don't have that and then it doesn't work and then they bring it to me and then all I have to do is put that piece in a watch. I'm gonna leave the lever and stuff here all alone. And I'm just going to try to clean this up a little bit. Uh, Go there. Well, first things first is I'm just going to dry brush it. Kind of off screen here. Now let's see if that already looks better there. Kind of does. What I'm worried about though, is if there was, you know, let me adjust the camera here. Is if there's gunk on the, uh... yeah, what up Logan? If there's gunk on that magnet, that's gonna affect stuff. That's gonna cause problems. You can kind of see there's some fibers of something or another there. Oh yeah, look at all that stuff. Get those lines right, uh, right around here. What was I thinking of setting up membership? Oh, is that not on yet? I thought that was. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't set that up. Uh, I don't have anything set up for that. No, if it's not on. Uh, what else was there? Super thanks, or thanks or whatever. 
Look at all of that gunk. Is that metal? That might all be metal. I might just have to replace that. Does this come out at all? Yeah, you can see there's like chunks of stuff in there. Super ch oh, there's super chats and then thanks, which I think are donations or like something. I don't want to take apart this gear train if I don't have to. But I might have to. Yeah, look at that. There's a chunk of something right there. Uh, you don't have to if you don't want to. That's fine. <laughs> or you're just saying that you can. Uh, yeah, I gotta get some... I, I actually do want to chat about some stuff today, too. Uh, just for... Uh, documenting some stuff. Uh, but obviously, members and stuff, I do want to turn that on so people can support the channel and stuff. Support me. Uh, I need to figure out some sort of icon and stuff. I don't know. I can't do oranges. I already got oranges over on the other channel. <laughs> I don't know. Watch Gears seems cliche. Or just Gears in general. Um... Yeah, there's some other stuff I want to talk about, but I want to get this kind of going first here. Yeah, look at all of that junk. Ideas are striking me. I was, oh my gosh. Wait, why didn't it show up up here? <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh my gosh. Thank you for that. Wow. You can and you did. You showed me. You know, I have the ultimate picker-upper tool. I have the ultimate picker-upper tool. And it's being defeated. <laughs> that didn't work at all. <laughs> yeah, all right, we're taking the gear train apart. Uh, it's called Rodico, but it's, you know, like the stuff that you stick on walls to, like, hang pictures and stuff? It's this. But it's, you know, it's fancy that. It comes in, look at this, it comes in, like, a nice little container here. Called Rodico. There's a QR code, I guess, if you need that for something. You can get it in green or in uh, in gray. The gray stuff is a little more tacky. Blue tag, remember that blue tag stuff? So there's blue tack and then there's uh, the green stuff here. Uh, need, 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 Needable erasers. You remember those from art class? Or school? That's kind of what that's like. Uh, yeah, let's go. I, I don't want to, but I'm going to take this gear train apart. Uh, just so we can actually see what's all going on. With that uh, piece there. Yeah, I have memberships. I'll have, to, I'll have to turn that on. Then I'll do a I'll have to do a video about it. Uh, do I need to do exclusive stuff for members, like exclusive member streams or chats or monthly somethings? I should. I don't know what I would do though. Uh, you know, at one point I did have this set up so that. Okay, you guys don't see anything different, but I kind of do.
if all if all of the 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 lenses are set up right i should be able to zoom all the way in and zoom all the way out with it staying in focus the idea is that you do but then people don't gotcha i mean and i would like to you know show appreciation obviously people don't have to spend money here but hey if people want to heck yeah Uh, speaking of people spending money on me, <laughs> uh, obviously this is something I do. This is how I make my money is fixing watches, even though this is just for me right here. Oh, there we go. Off camera. I did it too. Um, I want to start offering up. Watch repair as a service for folks. Heck, I can work on them right here on stream. Is my camera... Yeah, I'm gonna just not worry about it today. <laughs> There's our gear train. All unique and distinct wheels that are in there. So here's this little guy. Now, as you can see, it's magnetized because there's a magnet here. As you can see, magnets. And I'm using brass tweezers so I don't have to worry about, excuse me, about it sticking or anything. Look at all of that. Where does that come from? Where did just tiny metal fibers, is somebody using steel wool on the inside of their watch? I don't know, I'm very confused. Uh, let me just move everything aside here real quick. And if you're wondering how small this is, here's my hand, here's the piece right here. There, there's my, there's my finger next to it. <laughs> this is what drives the watch. This is what receives the pulse, that magnetic pulse. Uh, and right now it's covered in stuff. I am tempted to just toss this one aside, but I also want to try to save it too. So just piece by piece here, I'm gonna just... Don't mind my trash can system, it's literally just bubble mailers. When I get mailed stuff, I just use the bubble mailers as little trash containers. Now, I would use my, my Rodico here to pick all this stuff up. Why are these, these tweezers are not dressed. I'm going to switch tweezers here. You should get those steampunky looking glasses that they use for tiny type repairs. You mean like one of these things that you put on your, you put on your eyes there if you're not wearing glasses? Or do you mean the other one that I have somewhere? I've got more. <laughs> I've got them. Uh, loops. Oh, what's up, person? Let's go ahead and go over to YouTube here real quick. Uh, there we go. Fixed. Where was I? This screen. Someone needs band. I think I got it cleared off. Uh, thanks for the messages, person. I hope you're a real. You were a real person, and you learned your lesson. 
Uh, yeah, okay. This one's a double. It's got two magnifications. I think it's a four and a 10. Yeah, so four and a 10. I don't think you're going to be able to see anything through this because of the lights. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I do have these. Um, and these just clip on the little side here. Um, I do have them. They're okay, but also you have to have your working material. Uh, here, can you see... Right there, my, my fingerprints are in focus, right here. Do you see how close it is? And then if I wanted to use both of them. I don't know, that's maybe half an inch from the edge of the lens there. Obviously you can do the single guy. But as you can see, the working distance is literally right here, so. Yes, I could. Yes, I can use them. I just don't. Um, not only that, this is how I sit using a microscope. This is how I sit using those glasses or those the, the loops. Uh, if you do want to get some for yourself, if you ever want to work on stuff, L-O-U-P-E. And everyone likes different ones, so. Why so close? How uh, how do you manage what you're doing? Very So, here, I will show you the... Uh, here, we'll kind of scooch this down a little bit. Oh, you can see me on this screen, too, here. Um, I can't even get low enough. I lowered my table here. Uh, because I use the microscope now. Uh, here, let me just move the chair out of the way. If I were to use one of those loops, it'd be this. And then you literally just sit here with the work right in your face like this. And this is a low powered one. If it was a higher powered one, I have to sit like this. <laughs> My face would have to be in the desk. <laughs> uh, some people do work with those still. They work for some folks. I just, uh, it just was too scrunchy for me, I guess. Uh, and I just wasn't, I wasn't liking it. So, thus, the microscopes. And also I'm not sitting here hunched up like this. It just works out nicer. Usually, anyway. Holding hand, okay. The old guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, that's what you do. You get the little light and your little eye loop and you work on it. And there's different power loops and obviously the different powers are different working distances and stuff. Yeah. And no worries about derailing stuff. I always like to answer questions if I can, so. Oh boy, oh, it's just right here. <laughs> Would this work? Hold on. I'm going to try it again. There we 
we go. If I can get a good cross section. Oh, that's working. Uh, and then when I'm done here, now I have to throw away this section of Rodico because I can't be. You know, touching metal stuff. Told you, it was a super grabber. The super picker upper. Could make a bounty joke. That looks better. Would a magnet help with getting the shavings off? No, because this is a magnet. I'm just going to take that little piece with all the little metal bits on it there. Uh, okay, cool. That's like the tiniest detail work I care to do today. <laughs> That there for now. Let's look at the rest of the gear train here. So yeah, here's a jeweled hole. So the friction is nice and everything. And then here's the hole that everything else sits in. It's just a hole cut. <laughs> Again, just next to my finger. This is how tiny all this stuff is. I believe you go under. I'm gonna put everything back together here. Um, this is where it sucks. Remember how I said there was a magnet? So this is metal. <laughs> this is steel. And now I have to get this magnet back in that hole without getting it stuck on the walls. Well, it's going to get stuck on the walls. Wow, look at that. I did it. I did it first try. I've never done this before. That's a lie. I just wanted to sound cool in front of all of you. <laughs> No! Okay, I'm gonna have to deploy some... I'm gonna have to deploy some work here. There we go. So that's that's four holes I have to line up all at the same time. And you saw how tiny those parts are, and then if I push it just wrong, that's when things start snapping. Uh, it's going to be this guy here. So my first order of business is now I'm going to put all of these parts back together and I'm going to see if anything does anything. I don't expect it to. Like I said, that coil is messed up. So I don't think it's going to have any... It's not going to go, even though it's all touching. Wait a second. 
Oh, you're from the you're no, you're from the other spot. You don't go there. Okay. Woo. <laughs> And I've got two, maybe three movements sitting over here that I can potentially get parts from. Two are 715s, which is this. This is a 715 movement. And then one is a 515. And that's actually brand new, I think, still. I might have just been sitting in the thing. I don't know. We have tons of movements sitting around. <laughs> Again, we don't work it on quartz at the shop, really. It's just a replace. And I'm sure some people would be like, oh, why, why don't you guys... Nobody repairs anymore. You don't want to know what this would cost you <laughs> to, to repair. <laughs> well, I, you know, I say that. Um, I don't want to give any numbers out because I'm... Well, not only do I do work at the shop, I'm also planning on doing it at home here. Um, I don't want to give any numbers out yet because I don't have things worked out yet for all that. The gear train spins. So I'm going to reassemble just the gear train side of this, like the the working stuff. I'm not going to worry about the other side yet. And we're going to see if anything works. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't want to give it any, any numbers yet because I, I don't want somebody to be like, oh, you said it was this much. And then all of a sudden that number is way wrong or something. So, But we'll get people that come in and, I, and two people will bring in like a similar watch. And one person will be like, holy smokes, that's that's not worth it. Like that's that's insane. That's a ridiculous price. And then the next person will be like, wow, that's more than reasonable. I would pay double that. Obviously, people don't say that, quite that to us, but, you know. Okay, I need... There's a specific screw I need, and I think I see it in here. Let me just, I'm trying to not dump everything out. This reminds me of those, uh, those tubes that are filled with like rice and glitter and stuff. And then there's like little plastic toys in it. <laughs> so I do have a few coils, so I should have something that will work. And I don't know where that screw went. I'm going to take out the big pieces here. Ah! Screw I want's right there. So, and, you know, that's where pricing gets really weird. And, and You got to find that sweet spot. You don't want to be undercharging. Because then you know you're wasting your time. We also don't want to be losing out on people by charging too much. So, it's kind of a weird balance trying to find that number. Yeah, that's the screw I wanted there. Okay. I guess somewhat related to tie everything back. I think 
with memberships here. I actually, now that I think about it, I did start kind of drawing out membership prices and all that and what it'd be worth to people. Of course, you can watch this for free all day. You don't have to pay to watch this. Uh, okay, this gear train is assembled. There's nothing stopping it from working. Well, aside from everything that's stopping it from working. So I think, actually, so in theory, this should run. Uh, but if we get really close here, as you can see, nothing's moving. That uh, on the top there, that you should see that moving. And it's not. So now I'm going to start replacing parts. And the first thing I'm going to replace is just this coil, because like I said, that loose wire shouldn't be there. So this coil could just be shot. Uh, and that's not really something I can or want to fix. Uh, either with conductive paste or literally wrapping copper wire. I've seen people do that too and I just, I don't know. I get it if you can't find a replacement coil, but I also still want to get some uh, rubbing alcohol on this movement. I want to see some life in it first though, and then I can take it back apart and then a little quick bath and a scrub. Quartz watches I don't really want to service. Obviously, if somebody wants me to replace quartz movements, I can do that. Uh, battery changes, I can do stuff like that. Of course, I don't want to be dealing with people that are like, why would I pay you for a battery change when I can get it done for $2 at the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> We get people like that uh, at least once a week, roughly, I would say. And then they come back from that place after they broke it, and then we have to fix it. So here's my first move, is I'm literally just putting in a new coil. Other coil is sitting over here. And you can see a difference. There's even a color difference. Uh, so I don't know if that's like a moisture thing or what's going on there. But so that's my first step there, is just putting in a new coil. And I'm just going to button it back up again here. Maybe this is all it needed was a new coil. Uh, if not, the next step will be replacing the circuit. This looked fine though, it didn't look like it was all rusted or anything underneath. So, hopefully it was just that coil. I was like how I have this microscope and everything, and I'm just sitting here not using the microscope. <laughs> Just out here freestyling. Okay.
Okay. So the insulator here, its main goal is basically so that the battery doesn't poke through this hole and touch the dial, which is metal, and then start transferring, trans, transferring, oh no, transferring electricity to other spots in the watch. Okay, now do we have any life now? Oh, you know what? This might have been a bad coil. I don't know if you can see right there. There's a nice dent in it. Well, dang, I thought this one was good. Okay, well. Good thing I've got... At least one more here. If not... I think I might have three more here, actually. So... <laughs> Undo it all again. Uh, and then there's a new battery. I know because I just opened it. Uh, I was trying to just see if this watch worked when I first got it in. And that one's on me. I didn't check to see if that coil was even... Uh, good. I thought that was just... Thought it was fine. Oh. That sucks that this is kind of blowing it out on this on the screen there. All right, so I'm gonna grab this other coil now. Let's just set it in place there and. Inspect this one also right on the end here. Kind of a little scrunchy. But in the name of science, I'm going to try it up. <laughs> Whoops. Like I said, I think one of these other ones, uh, I don't think those movements have even been used or touched. So. But again, this would be a pretty short video if I literally just took this movement out and then just <laughs> swapped the parts over. Uh, not even swap the parts over, literally just swap out the whole movement. The whole point is to see if I can go through this one and... Bring it back to life. Uh, well, honestly, the price of one of these movements new is under a hundred dollars. Uh, I guess I can I can disclose that. So. Cost of replacement versus. the price of repairing. I think I'm using those words right. Cost versus price. Or just kind of the, the meaning behind them there. Whoa, my hand just kind of gave up on me there for a second. It's 
So once again, I don't see anything moving in here. Seems like it's pretty free though, so. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is now I'll grab the coil out of this movement over here. Uh, and if that doesn't work, then I'll try swapping out circuits. But I think that, like I said, I think that circuit's fine. I think it is the coil itself. Uh, and I don't have anything to repair the coil with. So right now, personally, I'm uh, I'm wearing a new watch every week. I'm not, I shouldn't say new. I'm wearing a different watch every week this year. So when and if that's not really an if. Obviously, I will get this watch fixed. When I get this fixed, I won't even be able to wear it until next year. I've got my I've got my. Uh, my watch is picked out, I think, through the through the end of the year. And I think this will be the first time in a number of years where I won't be wearing a specific watch into New Year's. I, there's one watch that I always wear into New Year's, uh, but I think I'm going to switch it up this year. Uh, partially because it was the watch that I wore into New Year's this year, which I don't know if I counted that as wearing it in my, you know, I've, I've been documenting all this on Instagram, you know, because I'm, I'm cool like that. Let me just scroll back through some pictures here real quick. Yep, there we go. <laughs> so I did, I, I actually started A different watch every week for the year. I started it actually last year, the first week of, or the last week of December. And then of course I switched into all that this year. So I'm gonna set that one aside. Again, I think this one might even be brand new. And I partially say that because it has a battery in it, which is how they get they get shipped with batteries in them. So as you can see, this is this is the same movement, 715, one jewel. This is a silver plate. That's actually how you can tell the difference in the Ronda movements. Is the silver plate um, is only one jewel. Whereas the gold plate is the five jewel. So fancy schmancy, huh? I also do have a a cleaner looking plate cover here if I wanted to use that and a new insulator again I like I said I honestly think it's the coils you know what let me just check before I do anything what if this battery wasn't good what if I've been wasting time here? Something should be moving right now. Uh, let me grab a, another battery. Just in case. Well, let me grab the one that was in the movement. Who knows how old it is, but we're going to try it. Okay. Really? I thought this battery was brand new. Maybe I drained it or shorted it somehow. Okay, well then before I take this apart, we know that this is a functioning system here. We got the functioning components and the coil and the circuit board, everything. So this is good. Like I said, that's a brand new movement. Uh, so let me take what I was working on and I'm just going to put it back together with the la Let's grab this one. This one had that little dent in it. 
And that's all I saw was a little dent. It doesn't look like anything's severed or broken on it, so... Yeah, so I do want to offer, I know I've, I've already said this a couple times, but I do want to offer um, what I do, you know, servicing mechanical watches, cleaning and oiling them, making sure they're running right. Uh, I want to offer that out of my home here. Heck, I can even do it on stream. Why not? It's already enough pressure to work on my own watches on stream. Why, why, why not add the layer of, hey, this is a customer's watch and they're probably judging the heck out of me. But in the same hand, in the same breath, in the same vein, if I do a customer's watch on stream, and they're like, you broke it or you stole this thing out of my watch or this or that or whatever. Because, you know, people are, people are people and they try to do stuff. We had a guy bring in uh, a very specific silver chain. And, you know, we worked on it. And he came back to pick it up. And he was like, all right, thank you so much. Leaves the store. He comes back 10 minutes later. And walks up to the counter and starts just this isn't my chain you didn't give me back my chain this isn't this isn't mine you stole you stole my chain this isn't it and we're like what like what's like it's a very specific chain that we could not have just you know duplicated or swapped out or anything and he'd already left the store saying like yes this is this is it and whatever i guess what he had done is he had some cleaner, some solution or something, uh, that he said that he, he always cleans it with, and it turned it brown. Uh, silver should not turn brown, especially not <laughs> five minutes after leaving our store. So I thought he had, like, it honestly looked like he had tried taking a lighter to it to, like, burn it or melt it or something, but it was just tarnished, so whatever... He put it in. Okay. So that coil is confirmed bad. This is that other battery here. Um, so we're like... You know, like, oh, you must have... He didn't even tell us that he put it in cleaner. He just hands it back to us and we're like... This should not have tarnished. <laughs> Tarnishing is when it, like, gets oxidized, like the oxidation of silver. Uh, it doesn't harm anything, it just changes the color, really. You just clean it off. So he hands it back to us, and we're like, oh, you did, you put it in something. So we went over to our cleaner. Bloop, bloop, done. And then he starts like, well, you know, this and that, this and that. And I was like, well, no, it's... Like, uh, we don't know what you stuck this in, but... <laughs> doesn't go in there. Why was I telling that story? Oh, right, yeah, because people, uh, he put it in cleaner with intent, yeah. So when we work on jewelry, obviously we clean it. Well, we clean it because you can't work on dirty jewelry. Like it just, like the torch and stuff and, because basically you're melting metal into the metal to, to like get it to join up. And if you're melting it into gunk, it just doesn't work. Also, why would you want to work on dirty, gross jewelry full of like lotion and dead skin and blood and other stuff? People have some nasty jewelry. But yeah, so like he, he must have like walked outside and then put it in something. And we were just like explaining it to him. And then he's like, well, how come, how come nothing else did it? So then we had to explain to him what rhodium plating was. And like this is that. And then he just left. And we're like, oh, okay. Hmm. 
And I think that's what it was, was that he, he, he had it, and he was like... Uh, it was a different shade than, like, some other piece that he had in his eyes. So instead of confronting us right away, he just took it and did whatever he did. Also, uh, I mean, I just, you know, the whole fact that why would we st steal somebody's silver chain? And replace it with a different silver chain. <laughs> um, yeah, this is like brand new. Um, silver's not w worth too terribly much. I'm just going to take this right here and literally just set it in there. And then this can just go over there for now. Um, yeah, people are... <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he was trying to strong arm us out of something or try to get his money back or if he genuinely just thought we were trying to steal his silver medal. We get that a lot. Two people drop off stuff and they're like, oh, I'm going to take a picture before I leave it with you in case you steal it. And we're like, you know, like they'll, they'll, ha 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 ha. And we're like, well, we don't do that. There's like 20 bucks of metal here. <laughs> or like, uh, people always come in and I know you guys, I know people, I know jewelry stores swap out diamonds. People steal diamonds all the time. That's, <laughs> that's, uh, I mean, maybe someone does if it's a real sketchy business. But, uh, and I hate to really break this to people, but diamonds don't really have a resale value. What is it? Just like, like, a, like a, uh, if you drive a car off the lot, it's already worth half as much as it was kind of thing, except like worse. <laughs> Literally not true. Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody got the... So, uh, my thinking is what it is, is people have their jewelry and it's all gunked up and full of stuff. Then you take the ring over to the ultrasonic machine and you knock out all the gunk and then you hand it back to them and they're like, wow, it looks completely different. So, I think what people are thinking is that clean jewelry is different jewelry than what they brought in. And it's like, no, nope. Okay. They'll see stuff moving. This watch works now. It looks different because it looks... Yeah, exactly. Um, and stones have inclusions in them. Uh, looks better. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, you, you, you worked in jewelry too, so you know all about this. Yeah. Uh, so, to bring it back to my original train of thought here if I open up somebody's if somebody sends me a watch and I open it up here on stream and I do the work all here on stream and then close it up or whatever nobody can be like oh you took the excuse me so um, here's another here's another lesson I'm gonna just real quick when you see a watch say jewels, like this says right here, jewels, this is a jewel, this is a jewel, this is a jewel. These are synthetic rubies. That's it. It's just a synthetic ruby that's shaped like a puck with a hole in it. Uh, if your watch says it has 23 jewels, it doesn't mean 
diamonds. I was reading that on Facebook the other day. Somebody in one of those, one of the groups that I'm in. Somebody had a customer bring in a watch for battery change. And then they turned around and they're like, my, my watch has 24 jewels in it. And you stole it. You stole my diamonds. From the inside. They and I guess they said, you know, from the, you took the you took the diamonds out of the inside of my watch. And it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, people are pretty crazy. Um, which sucks. Because then you have to start doing a new intake process. What are the rubies for? That's a good question. So this, uh, okay, so I'm going to take this watch here. Or this movement here, right? Uh, I'll even hold it the same direction and, and zoom this out a little bit. Boom, 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 boom. All right. See that? One jewel, five jewel. Oh, it's upside down. So here, let me turn it this way. You can only see four. The fifth one is on the other side of this. Five jewels, one jewel. As you can see, this is just metal steel holes here. Um... The jewels are your bearings. That's your, we'll call them bearings for now. They can polish the, as, as tiny as that is, as tiny as that hole is there, they can polish the surface on the inside. Oh, you know what I can do even more? They can polish the inside I'm going to get off of all this so it stops shaking. They can polish the inside of that hole so that it's perfectly smooth. Uh, and with the with a ruby, with a jewel, uh, it's non-porous. So it's like a perfectly... Like your phone screen. Non-porous. And it's nice and smooth. Like you, you slide all over it, right? So one that reduces friction and then the, the, the gears, the pivots, the posts, the pivots are also perfectly polished, which is metal. It is porous, I, I guess, but you have a smooth surface and a smooth surface. Uh, so there's no friction there. And then you put a little bit of oil in it and then it wears less because there's less friction. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whereas if you have, whoops, the, I'm just gonna put it right here. I'm just gonna set it right on top. Whereas if you have the metal, it's literally just a stamped piece of metal there. Sure, you can polish it, but it's not as frictionless and it just wears, uh, it wears more. Uh, yeah, so you put the, you put the rubies in the jewels to reduce friction and to make it smoother, as it were. So in a mechanical watch, you are gonna have one jewel Five joules, seven joules, 15 joules, 17 joules, 19 joules, 21 joules, 23 joules. Which of those bearings turn then? Uh, so I, I, I guess the, the term bearing, the gear, yep, yep. So that's the gear train. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this into a little cup and put some uh, rubbing alcohol in it and then just kind of just give it a nice little bath. On this bench, because this is my, this is my dirty bench. This is my, my clean space. <laughs> Oh, 
I just dumped it all over. Tweezers. I know this is all off camera. I'm like, oh, what the heck's he doing? So you saw me brush this by hand with just the toothbrush without liquids or anything. Look at how much more stuff just came out now. See all those dots? That's all gunk that was still in here. There's the other, uh, right there. That's the other fifth jewel. Uh, so 21, 23 is kind of what you see now. 21 is usually pretty common uh, for jewels in a mechanical watch. Um, 15 is kind of the lowest you want to see uh, if we're being snobs about it. Uh, and it's an odd number because uh, in, in a mechanical watch on the balance wheel, there's one jewel there. Every other jewel is paired up. That's why you don't see 20. I mean, you obviously do see 20 sometimes, but anything below 15, usually seven, like in old pocket watches, you'll see like seven jewels. Uh, and then it just starts, especially because they're a hundred years old. That's a hundred years of that piece of metal turn inside of another piece of metal so that hole becomes oval shaped and people will sit there and swear up and down at you that oh this watch doesn't need to be f worked on it runs perfectly fine <clears throat> and then you open it up and it's got like old gunked up oil and just just looking gross i see that all the time uh hopefully you know what I haven't busted this out in a while, so I think I'm going to use this to dry this off. Uh, excuse me a moment while I mute my microphone so you don't have to hear this. <laughs> we have no idea what this is. It's a little leaf blower. What I used to dry stuff with sometimes. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute my microphone here. I forgot that it also isn't really... Oh, did this shut off? Hold on here. Why did you shut off? Uh, the mini leaf blower also doesn't really blow that hard. Why did that just shut off? Give me a moment here. Uh, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go here. Deactivate that and then activate it again. Maybe that'll fix it. And I fixed it. Uh, the leaf blower also doesn't really blow that hard. So I still have to get out the old bubble blower bulb.
What's funny is I'm not muting for this, even though I think this might be louder than... ...than the leaf blower, but, oh well. I'll do it down here. I can still hear it. I did also drop it. I had the, uh, the tweezers just... The lack of friction on the, uh, on the center wheel there. So, when I dropped it there, I think this got, okay, it didn't actually get stuck on anything. I'm trying to figure out why this was kind of just bouncing around. Instead of sitting down properly in place. I gotta figure that out real quick. Okay, that's seated in place there. I don't know what was going on with that. Um, but yeah, it does suck that one person kind of ruins it for the bunch. And it's never, I, I, I don't want to sound rude or anything. Oh yeah, look how nice and smooth that is. Nice and smooth. Um, I don't want to sound rude and I, you know, I just, I, I guess I really shouldn't be talking about this in general, but I'm, you know, I'm doing it. <laughs> Try to be honest and keep it honest with you guys. Um, it's never, uh, it's never the person that comes in with the Rolex or the person with, uh, a $10,000 platinum ring with four carats of diamonds on it or whatever. Uh, it's never the people that bring in the very expensive stuff that are like, you stole my blah, 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 or, you know, you scratched this or... You stole a stone, or you swapped my ring out, or, you know. I once, it's it's always somebody with the, the lower valuable, the less valuable stuff. And I, again, I don't want to sound rude. Obviously, it still is, you know, someone's jewelry or, you know, an heirloom piece or, you know, whatever. It's been in their family forever. Um, that sucks. Like, I, I once had a lady... Tell me that I swapped out her crown on her watch. And she came in the store and she was, this is Russian gold and you stole my Russian gold. And we're like, no, we didn't touch anything. And she sat there and was like, it's a different color. So clearly you swapped it out because this isn't Russian gold anymore. And we're like, no. <laughs> And it was like a, it was like a, a, a gold plated, you know, like, so it did have like our gold, what is it called? Rolled? It's not solid gold, but there is like an actual like thick layer of gold applied to it. So if we stole it, it's literally $2 of gold, which obviously is more work than it's worth. Um, but she sat there and... And then we're like, no, we, that's not, we didn't do anything. And then she came back with somebody else and, and then finally she was just like, okay. And then left. <laughs> and we haven't seen her since. So. Victim mindset about life. Yeah. And like I said, that's, and. You know, I, I fully encourage if somebody wants to drop something off and please take a picture before you leave the store and I'll even like help them set it up. I'm like, here's the thing that I filled out. Here's your ticket with our number on it. Here's your piece of jewelry. Here's a business card with the store. So you'd like, yeah, please, please document this all. And then they come back and then they never, 
it's never an issue. <laughs> And what does my boss always say? He's like, if we if we were in the business of stealing people's jewelry, we would be out of business. So, but again, I yeah, not really a topic I want to jump into like that, but it is what it is, and it is something that we have to worry about. That somebody's always going to, yeah, like you said, somebody's always out to get them. So. Uh, so this watch works now, so let's go ahead. I didn't even clean. I was going to clean the gears from the other side. I don't think I'm going to anymore. <laughs> they work fine. I, I can set the date. I can set the time. Nothing feels crunchy. There's no anything there, so I'm not too worried about it. I am going to swap out that insulator, though, just because this one looks its obviously brand new, so... I just flung a battery tab at my face, which I don't need, so. Whatever. Oh uh, yeah, so I do I do need to work on. Obviously I've done stuff, you know, over email with people before. You know, correspondence with somebody and they'll send me something to work on and fix. And I've had nightmares with stuff before. Not anybody accusing me of stealing or breaking stuff. Uh, but yeah, it sucks, and it's it's stuck with me for years. So <laughs> I don't know if I, if I want to call it a disclaimer, but I, I think I need to make up some sort of disclaimer that like you know this is me doing this by hand. I'm not a machine. Things are, you know, apt to happen from time to time. You know, I just got to figure that all out. Just to, you know, and it, it's not just covering for me, it's also covering for the client in case something does happen. So. Do the thing when you're delivering pizza? Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Why do I not doubt that for a second? So I don't have quartz watch oil, but I do have the thinnest oil that I have. Excuse me. And I know it looks like I'm not doing anything because I can't, I've, I'm kind of not, so. Flip this over and do all this stuff now. I don't do quartz. So this is a quartz watch, but this is me doing this for myself at home. Uh, also, just for the sake of a video, if somebody wants to know how quartz watches work and go together. Um, a lot of it's similar. This watch here, actually, the Seiko. I think I mentioned this in another one, that the dial side, which is this right here, this is the dial side, this is where the keyless works, um, aka using a crown that you click out to set the time and stuff instead of putting the key in the back or the front of the watch. Um, it actually was the exact same as the mechanical movement. It was the exact same. Um, so a lot of it is similar. Similar parts, just usually a lot smaller. Obviously the biggest difference is the power source. Also where the power is introduced into the watch, into the, into the train. Um, in a mechanical watch, the power is actually introduced to the center wheel or the second second wheel. The first wheel being the mainspring barrel. 
and there's five. The fourth wheel is the second. The tick, 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 tick. That's the one that goes around 60 times a minute. And then the fifth wheel is what engages with the pallet fork, the escapement, uh, the spinny bits. Whereas in a quartz watch, the power, at least here, is introduced into the fourth wheel, aka the seconds wheel. Um, which is weird because the seconds wheel isn't actually what tells the seconds in the watch. That's this wheel over here. Uh, and things just get really confusing and dicey from there. <laughs> but yeah, so the power gets introduced in a different spot and also, uh, yeah, just... the Otherwise, it's, it's kind of similar. So I'm going to put that like that. I'm going to grab this guy over here, because why not? Dang it, I didn't actually want that to click in yet. <laughs> uh, but also, like I said, full honesty, to replace this movement uh, is a lot, Would if I did work on quartz watches, replacing it is a lot cheaper. This watch here that I was working on, I can't replace this movement. I actually had to uh, sacrifice parts, salvage parts from another watch. Even though this watch is really sick, so now I have to buy another watch to fix this watch. Uh, I, had, I had to buy a new circuit board for this watch. Um, so in that instance, yes, you would have to you know work on it. Uh, again, I did it because it was my watch for me. No, that is... I do have that backwards, don't I? Yeah, because the date wheel is on the outside. See, that's what I was wondering about, is the, the placement of it there. Over the yoke spring. I gotta take it apart again, because <laughs> I put it in the wrong spot. Okay. So this guy has to go... Hmm. Set the date. Set the time. So let me see if I can do this from here then. Put that in a date set or time setting. Pull this out. And maybe I did this all backwards, <laughs> but we're gonna see if this works. There's a little silver strip right here. I'm trying to get this. You know what? That actually does go that way. I'm being a goofball. Yeah, no, I had that backwards. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you a close-up of why. Which, in my head, I was like, no, this has to go this way, but... I looked at that other one too quickly. 
So this side right here has teeth on it. This side does not. When you click that into time setting, now it will engage with this wheel here. Whoa, don't mind me. I'm gonna do something else here now. I'll get this figured out. I will get this figured out. With the help of the microscope. <laughs> so this should click into three positions, and I might have to, honestly, install this and then take apart the watch again. Well, no, we can do it like this. Okay. Well, I just clicked it in. Okay. So here's what I'm thinking. If I pull this, not out all the way no nope, I got to take this apart <laughs> I got this side all set up here uh, so basically what's happening is there is a lever that should click into three different spots and it's only clicking in two so it'd be permanently stuck in date set mode which I don't want to be so take this all apart again here Boy, I hope I can figure this out. Only taking this apart, what, six times now at least? The day alone? Also, what sucks is sometimes trying to buy and source just a replacement piece Sometimes costs more than just buying a new movement and swapping it out. We are definitely in the realm of replace for this watch, but it works, so. Okay, so. Why won't you click? So that setting stops the gear train because you're in time setting. That's two, but there should be a third option. But what's not clicking right here? Let's take out this last screw here and then uh, maybe this will reveal its secrets to me. And here I thought I wasn't going to have to take the screw out. Yeah, so do you see this third? There's three bumps here. That's the pulled all the way out click, middle click, and then you should go one more. There could be something where maybe that crown or that stem is 
slightly different than this one? Possibly. That's a possibility. I didn't actually see if this was a 715 stem or if it's a 515. Maybe they use the same stem and I'm just being a goofball. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna glop some stuff in here real quick. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Now, in theory, I should be using a grease here, not an oil. Or whatever. Not sure what changed, but now this works perfectly fine. up a bit here nope other way that up and like that. Looks a little more correct. Okay. So unless I have to, I'm just gonna leave that clicked in. Which of course I say that and I know full well that I'm gonna be clicking it, especially right now. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know why that wasn't working. But it works now, and it's better to be lucky than good or something. <laughs> I don't quite understand that, but sure. Oh. Might help if I put this back together on this side too. So I'm gonna do that. <laughs> oh goodness, I'm all over the place, aren't I? Oh well, having a good time, filling up uh, two hours here, speaking of which, dang it. Can I be sneaky here? Can I be sneaky? Yes, I can. If I wanted to be real fancy, I could try to like polish up this plate, but uh, I'm good. There we go. Okay, movements back together again. 
Now I can flip it this way. I only really noticed because the, the coil was, was looking like it was sitting at an angle there, so I didn't know what was happening. But everything is together and making sense once again. I'm going to start with the tall cannon pinion. Oh my gosh, I almost didn't make it to the mute button there in time. You know what? Dang it. I just realized I wasn't supposed to pull that cannon pinion out. Uh, I'll fix it though, it's fine. If you look closely, you can see these two bars right there, those two little copper colored bars. The bottom of this cannon pinion has a little uh, little collar there, and it's supposed to sit around those two. So I wasn't supposed to pull this out. Whoops! But I can I should be able to uh, take something here. If not, I'll have to <laughs> I'll have to take everything apart even more than I already took it apart. Dang it. I didn't think about that at all. I was wondering why this wasn't clicking into place or anything. So in theory, if I do that, and then I wish I had some others of these. We'll just try this real quick. Yeah, I'm going to have to take it apart again. Dang it. There's no way that just clicks back into place. I've been lucky today, but I don't think I'm going to be that lucky. And this doesn't fit. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take things apart again. We're getting real deep here. Uh, yeah, this will all make sense. This will all make sense. It's a, it's a cannon pinion. It actually is attached to the wheel, and I, I should have known. Uh, I was wondering what I was seeing uh, on this side with one of the gears. So now let me take this all apart again. The watch works though. This is all just bonus now, just me having fun. That's all this is now at this point. Like 20 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago the watch worked. I wonder if somebody in the comments is going to be like, well, this guy pulled the cannon pinion right off. There we go. Well, if anything, it's good practice. Uh, using the screwdriver, using the tweezers. Picking stuff up, moving it over. Yada, yada, yada. So now I have to take apart the train bridge. And then underneath the train bridge, there was another bridge. Because why not? Why wouldn't there be? Uh, okay, so we can take this guy off again. Whoa, well, that took the other guy with it too. Wow, hold on. This is going to be our second wheel. Oh, <laughs> that's just sent flying. Uh, I 
So underneath that, I am just flicking stuff everywhere today. Oh my gosh. There's another bridge here. Also, I misspoke. The power in a quartz watch here comes in on what would be like the fifth wheel. There's that, that's just a post. Okay, so we got this wheel here, right? What I'm gonna do, I just got my anvil block, so give me a moment here. I have to wipe it off. They, they mail these things. Uh, they sell them covered in oil. So much that it's bagged in a bag. So much oil. So let me get that out here real quick. And then... Obviously they ship them with oil because it's raw metal. Raw steel and stuff. Let me grab some rubbing alcohol here. I mean, I get why they ship them like this, but I just, I just don't like it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm gonna stick the cannon pinion shaft. It's kind of a it's kind of a combination cannon pinion shaft or cannon pinion and a center wheel. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick this in one of the holes. Okay, like that. And then I'm gonna stick this on the top like that. Okay. And then I'm gonna stick it like that. See how easy that was? I just only had to undo <laughs> all the progress of putting this watch back together uh, to do it, which is fine. Again, we, we've gone beyond the realm of practical I would say at least an hour ago. All I would need to do is measure the height of this movement, which I know, and then go on to one or more of my suppliers' sites. I call them up or whatever and just be like, hey, I need this movement, this height. And then they'd be like, okay, you'll have it later this week. And then I'd have it later this week and then I could just replace it. But again, where would be the fun in that video? That's all back together. That's literally all it was. Well, these blocks are really nice because I can just hold that for me and then just snap it into place. Now, why couldn't I do that the other way? Uh, because this I was pushing on the, the copper ring instead of on the cannon pinion there. Since I've got this open, I might as well put a little, a little bit of the juice in there, a little bit of the sauce. Just a little bit. There we go also helps me pick everything up together. <laughs> uh, whoa, whoa, okay. Let's go back in here. Just like that. And which screw was that? Was that this guy here? Going to safely assume that it was that screw there.
Uh, and now put all these wheels back in. There we go. Oh my gosh. Check it, make sure it's in place. I believe it is. There we go. And then we gotta do the magnet. Okay. Um, I'm very relaxed right now, if you guys couldn't tell. <laughs> this is indeed relaxing stuff to me. We also just hit the top of the hour. That's pretty cool. So I have uh, a number of watches that I own, and there's a few of those number of watches, that number of watches, whichever, uh, that are uh, like radio controlled or atomic timekeeping where it sets itself to, oh, so they're always on time or whatever. And uh, you can set an hourly chime on them. They just beep or, you know, sound off. So every hour in my house, there is a number of beeps. <laughs> I mean, I could turn them all off, but I think that would... One of those things where I would feel weird if it didn't make the sound now. You know, just like if you have a grandfather clock that has like an hourly repeater on it or whatever. Kind of get used to it. Uh, okay, that's back in again. Coil, circuit. I'm gonna get this watch put back together. I'm, I'm gonna see these hands tick. 
uh, in this watch. And check functions on it, like time setting and hacking and setting the date and all that. Now, not only do you have to worry about the cost effectiveness, I just realized I've been doing all that down here. <laughs> that's, that's my bad. Uh, the cost effectiveness of doing what I'm doing right now in a, in, a, in a work setting, in a setting of business, in a repair business, how much would I have to be charging that screw just went flying, which is fine. I see it. Because uh, there's only so many hours in a day, so only so many things I can get done. How much do I have to charge for this when I could be replacing how many movements in this amount of time? Or... How many watch batteries could I be changing? Um, what kind of what uh, what kind of work could I get done on a pocket watch? And that's that's another tough balance too, is you have to you have to factor in the time it takes to get something done. Now, obviously, I goof some stuff up on this watch, but. I think that's beside the point. Some intermediate wheels. This guy now works. Okay. You face that way, but I first have to put another wheel on. Again, there is some discoloration on that wheel, but I, I don't see it being a huge issue. And if it is, I will just fix it. This, this awkward looking gear is what uh, flips the date at midnight. And then it has this spring, it actually has a spring arm here, that if you wind the watch backwards, it actually clips out of the way. And or if you try to set the date at midnight, I think it's actually more for this so that it bends in when you're setting the date so you don't just break an arm in half. Either way, uh, there's not much left on here. There we go. Now this, I think, is a pretty crazy design design choice myself. Um, also, that arm that I just put in is literally just to hold the that piece inside. This, I think, is a pretty crazy design choice. The part that holds the spring is a floating plate. <laughs> I'll never understand that, but... It works. Whoa.
That is a loaded spring right there. Alright, that's the tense part. That is the tense part. That all I'm trying to do is get it close. Okay. So now what I have to do There we go. Is that a screw hole? Nice. Let's tighten a couple of these guys up. And I can finally move my right hand. There we go. Uh, and get to the rest of these screws. There's two of them still. Right there and right there. Okay, so that is an assembled movement right there. I'm gonna go ahead and verify the clicks work. Setting the date works. <laughs> Why'd I have to pull that so hard there? Time setting. I'm setting the time and if you look very closely on the outside here, you sh oh, you can't quite see it, but uh, yeah. Date setting works. Oh my gosh, why does it keep doing that? <laughs> uh, okay, so this is now set to midnight. That is now set to midnight, so I can take this guy. And again, this is just a pressure fit. Push it down, push it on. Again, this, and also this dial is in perfect shape, so I'm not too worried about touching it. Uh, it is a matte finish, so I actually can just do this. I honestly might have a rule when I start doing watches at home here that I just do not touch any watch that has a gloss black finish dial uh, like Movado, Zorado, stuff like that uh, simply because if you look at them wrong um, do they just get marks um, not not scratches but like just anything just gets on it and basically just ruins the finish of the dial which is really sad uh, but that's just how it goes 
So here we go, we're gonna set some hands back on here. This is such a thick hand too. Wow. So midnight, and I do have a tool for this. I'm gonna take this off of here. Um, oh, it's not even attached. It okay. Hold on. I'm just gonna use this. Line that up straight. That should be on there straight. Oh, that's kind of fuzzy. There we go. In the minute hand. I'll try this tool again here. Maybe I was just doing it wrong or something. Check it from the side. Looks pretty flush. Okay, make sure that minute hand was, or that hour hand was off the dial. And for some reason, any anytime I'm in a watch form, people always seem to struggle with second hands. And I don't know if it's like an age thing or just like a hand dexterity thing. Did I? Without skipping a beat, that's on. And, and I just, like, people are like, how do you do it? Like, what, what am I doing wrong? How, how come I can't do it? And obviously I want to help people do this stuff sometimes. Uh, I don't want to give away every trade secret or everything. But I'll help people out when I can. And I, fe I feel like it's going to hit. Uh, let me just set this ahead. Oh, wow. No, there is a clearance there. Wow. Um, like, and I wish I could help, but I, I don't know. I, I've never struggled with getting second hands attached. So I, I don't know how to explain it to people that, um, I guess if I were to just give a quick point here, if somebody's still listening or watching this and they need to figure out how to put second hands on, is I feel the post with the, the base of the second hand and then just kind of know where to aim, <laughs> which isn't really much of a help. But I'll you know get it close and I'll kind of feel a bump and then I know to pick it up and move it over just a little bit. And I did that here. I didn't do that through a microscope. I literally just did that here, just touching it. Um, that's how I do it. Like, I can't really explain or help people how to do it better because I just... Like I said, I just pick it up and I kind of touch it and feel it. And stick it on. And then just, you know, hand... Steady hand control. Precise movements, whatever. Uh, so this watch is set at noon now. So if you look in that hole there. Click it out one click there. And that pulls out the setting lever. So you can take the stem out there. So there is one more thing here that I have to fix. Um, because this watch is loose in this case.
Give me a moment here. Watch is loose in the case, right? Uh, so I need something to hold it in place. So usually a watch has a movement ring, like a movement holder. Um, but for some reason, when I got this watch, it did not have one. Uh, and without it, when you're going to set the time and stuff, you can see it through all the scratches on there, but that thing is sliding around all sloppy. Um, and I kind of cheated. I already did this. Uh, but I took my 3D printer and I measured inside diameter, outside diameter, and then I made a little holder. I 3D printed this. And uh, it just sits in there. And then I had to cut it because obviously the stem has to fit through it. And I don't know much about 3D modeling on how to make a hole. So I literally just had to cut a section out, but now... Oh, it's wiggling because it pushed out. Actually, I think I have this upside down. Hold on. Let me try it this way. I was so dang proud of myself for doing this. I 3D printed a circle. <laughs> Obviously I didn't 3D print a circle. A circle isn't three-dimensional. Yeah, so that all sits in there. And then with, when the lid shuts down on it, it just holds it all in place. Um, put a battery in it there real quick. And then I also, of course, yesterday, I, I did some cheating. I did some pre-work on this. Uh, I found a gasket that I have. It's kind of close to the right size. Uh, if I stick it on the back of this and then stick it on, it should be fine. But I also want to get some silicone grease on... this crown. I also need to clean this case. So liberally applying some silicone grease. That'll also get in the threads too. There's also that rubber uh, gasket in the crown. Okay, so in th oh. In theory, this should all be seated nicely now. Obviously, I'm not I'm just finger tightening that. Brown. What did I do wrong? expecting that oh no <laughs> oh oh no I'm gonna have to grab something or something uh, I'll, I'll ask you first off this is cool uh, it would be cooler if it, it worked for everything else uh, Do you see, do you see what's happening here? Do you see what's happening here?
You see what's happening here. <laughs> oh no. Um, I need to figure out now. And this might be, this might be a simple fix. Yeah, do you, do you, do you see? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this could be a simple fix. I'm going to mess with this off stream. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to figure out how to clip this and, <laughs> and put it into a... I'm going to have to make a YouTube short of that. Guy spends two and a half hours fixing a watch. <laughs> good that's really good and again like i said if it didn't mess with the uh the uh flipping of the hour or the uh, i'm sorry the date this would be really cool but it's wrong so i have to take it apart and fix it um my first thought is the uh the magnet that gets the pulse that receives the pulse that could be uh, I think I might have seen, like, another piece of something on it. Um, the coil that I installed should be exactly the same as anything else. So I don't know what's, <laughs> what that's doing. Um, it shouldn't be the coil. I think it actually is that the, the, the magnet, the, the escapement... Which is weird, because the power's not escaping from there. The power's going in through there. Uh, but it's kind of like the fifth fifth wheel there. Um, I'm going to take this apart, and I think I might just swap out that part from here and see if that fixes it. <laughs> this watch is supposed to do that. This watch is supposed to do that. Uh, I, I, I think you can see, you can understand that, that it, it is supposed to do that. This is not. <laughs> oh boy, I'm dropping stuff. Okay. Uh, Ain't that goofy. That is certainly goofy. That is... Again, and I, I wish I had a new crystal on hand for this, but I don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I also need to realign that second hand up. It's, it's slightly off. Um, yeah, I gotta call it there. That's, that's too perfect. <laughs> um, I'll probably tweet about this or something or uh i don't know maybe I'll, I'll make an updated short i'll put a short out as an update on this watch when it when it runs the right way everything should be installed correctly because obviously everything is working on here um but i gotta fix something or something in there uh i'm gonna look this up and maybe it is just something simple again i don't think it's an issue with that coil but the only thing i can think of is is if that the magnet one the magnet wheel the fifth wheel there i'm going to keep calling it the fifth wheel because i don't know what it's actually called um i'm going to start by swapping that out and then just seeing if that works uh, but I'm going to get going <laughs> because that's, that's too perfect of a note to end it on right there. Uh, and I think anybody watching this can agree this is the perfect point to just <laughs> call the video. <laughs> oh, I was so excited that I got it all done and that it was going to be able to wear it and then, you know, get the new crystal and make it look all nice and pretty. Uh, 
but I guess there's gonna be a little bit more work. Uh, yeah, that's that's the perfect way to end this video. With it. This is why I don't work on quartz watches. <laughs> Good place to toss the towel. Oh no, I'm gonna keep working on it. I'm just done streaming it. <laughs> Oh gosh. Yeah, that's 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 beautiful. <laughs> I'm sure there's an easy explanation for that. Uh I'll go find it. But yeah. You want me to fix your watch as perfectly as I fixed this watch here? Just get a hold of me. Uh I don't know if people can I think you can send me messages on, on, on YouTube. I don't know. I don't know how this all works. Um Yeah. We get it figured out. I've got a lot to work on with that. Uh, so we've got some thinking to do about it too. Uh, how I want to do it, how often I want to do it, uh, what I'm able to do, what I'm not able to do. Uh, figure out some different pricings, website stuff I want to get figured out. Memberships here, obviously. So, tons for me to do. And it's already, uh, what is it, 4.30? This watch is running correctly, so I can tell the time. Uh, yeah. perfect spot that's gonna, <laughs> that's gonna be it for me uh i also have to figure out how to get this clip wait a minute i can just start a uh i'm gonna not have that music playing in this just in case but i can go ahead and just actually do a recording yeah Logan, thanks for hanging out uh obviously hit me up on discord um yeah, heck yeah. I'm going to do a little recording here of just this. Uh, I'll do it after the stream. Um, that's just... No, no, I'm just going to clip it. Never mind. I'm just going to clip it. Uh, so I'm going to get going. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, especially... Oh my gosh. That is literally too perfect. Uh, I'll work on watches. Send me yours if you want me to work on it. We'll do it on stream. Why not? Uh, so I'm going to get going. Thanks again for watching. I don't have an outro or anything, so that's it for me. Bye, everyone.